A few years ago, I founded a discussion group on Facebook called Kindly Disagreeing. We usually examine current events, but sometimes delve into science and even philosophy. I'd like to talk about the reasons I started the group and add a few topics to both that group and this channel. I do my best to disagree agreeably, and I like it when people can articulate why they think one of my ideas is incomplete or even mistaken. Some people have rational reasons for disagreeing, and some have reasons that are more of a gut feeling. I am open to exploring both. It allows me to examine my own thoughts through a critical lens. And when I'm being honest with myself, and the people objecting to my point of view, I can refine it. Sometimes I strengthen my arguments, and sometimes I discard them. I find this refining process incredibly valuable, and encourage others to use it as well. One of the central tenets of my philosophy is to recognize my own limitations. I've talked about the value of intellectual humility on my channel in the past. For me, it is vital to keep in mind that one of the things I know with the greatest amount of certainty is how little I can be certain of all the other things I know. I can know the things that originate from my own mind and heart with a great deal of accuracy. For instance, I know I love my wife. I'm all the proof I need that this is true. I have a great deal of certainty that she loves me as well. She says so and shows it regularly. But there are some things that do not inspire the same conviction in me. This is a short list in descending order. I believe the Earth is a giant, roughly spherical rock spinning through space. I've been told that it is by people I trust. I've seen globes, videos, and photographs that reinforce this trust. But I have not done the kind of experimentation that would demonstrate to me beyond any shadow of a doubt that this is the case. Perhaps I will someday, but for now I'm content to be 99% sure that I haven't been misled. Another idea, which I'm fairly certain, is that God exists. My degree of confidence is a little below the former example, but still fairly high. The conviction has been reinforced by people I trust, and in this case, I have done what I would classify as experiments to test my assumption that there are divine forces at work in my life. Both this testing of faith and the testimonies of others draw me to the conclusion that there is providence in my life and that there is an underlying moral order that supports and reproves myself and the rest of humanity. I'm a little less certain about the nature of the divine than I am that he or it is there in some form but I suspect that this is a discussion for another day. Another, more social example that I am convinced of is that every human life has value. This conviction, however, is moderated by the countering belief that our lives do not all have the same value. The difference that I see in individual significance is contrary to my religion, which professes that every person is of infinite worth, and also contrary to the culture of my country, which teaches that all men are created equal. I see inequality in both the beginnings and ends of individuals. For instance, I believe I am less significant than Einstein and Picasso, but I see my life as likely more significant than a newly fertilized egg, a death row inmate, or an enemy combatant. My confidence that this description of significance is true is lower than the previous examples, but still worth mentioning. Lower on the list, which I have confidence, and back to science, is the idea of climate change. My thoughts are still very much evolving on this one. 
The data I've seen indicates that temperatures have been slowly and steadily rising for the past few hundred years. I am less convinced that humans are the primary drivers of that change, and less still that if we don't dramatically alter the way we interact with the environment, that there will be catastrophic effects. Humans have adjusted to far more change than what we are seeing now without nearly the technological prowess we have at this time. My point of view will almost certainly be refined as I explore and discuss the issue, but for now it is very much unsettled. My point here, though, is not to make these particular assertions undeniable. I rather want to demonstrate the benefit of sharing those unsettled thoughts and by doing so to create a dialogue. I welcome the input of anyone who conscientiously considers my ideas. So whether you wish to agree and support what I have said here, or you would rather kindly disagree, I am always open for a discussion of the ways our thoughts interact.